Hello, poker fans and wannabe World Series of Poker bracelet winners. Uh, I thought it might be fun to start a new series to kind of teach you guys a little bit more about the other games because there's more to poker than just playing No Limit Hold'em. Sure, No Limit Hold'em is what you see on TV. It's the most popular form of poker. But poker's been around a long time and at the World Series of Poker, if you do come out and play it, you'll notice that pretty much every day, there's a different form of poker, whether it's stud, deuce to seven, triple draw, um, 10 game mix, the $50,000 Poker Players Championship, which is my absolute favorite. So the game I wanted to start with in this series is the one that's usually the most intimidating for players who play No Limit Hold'em. A lot of the ways in which people learn how to play No Limit these days is very for, uh, form formulaic, if you will. So there's rules, right? Play these hands, don't play these hands. With stud, it allows for so much more creativity because it's so board dependent, right? So you don't just say, okay, play eights with a jack. Okay, except when there's an eight out and a queen raises and there's just so much more to it than just the simple formula. Also position. Your position changes from hand to hand depending on where the bring-in is. And we'll get to that after we sort of discuss the basic principles of how does seven card stud even work? So in the game of seven card stud, each player is dealt two down cards just like they would be in Hold'em. Now, the only difference here is every player gets a third card that's face up, okay? The lowest card by suit, and to memorize this, it's really easy. It's clubs, diamonds, hearts, spades. So it's alphabetical, C, D, H, S, right? The lowest card by suit is the bring-in. So the, if you get the deuce of clubs, that means you bring it in. Now, if you were playing, let's say, in a 20-40 limit game, the bring-in might be five bucks, right? So you have to put in at least five. You can come in for 20, but we don't recommend that here, especially in a game like seven stud. When you're the bring in, just go ahead, throw in the five bucks and you know, so be it. The ante typically in a 20, 40 game will also be in that neighborhood of, you know, three to five bucks, depending on where you're playing. So now what happens is the next player to the left of the bring in gets to act, raise, fold. You could call the bring in as well. Um, action goes around on 1st Street. Now you come to 4th Street. And the bet here is a standard, if you're again playing 20-40, it's $20, right? The only time that changes, and this is really, really stupid, okay? It's very archaic and a dumb rule. The only time that changes is if someone pairs their door card, their door card being the face card up. So let's say a guy raised with a 5 and he catches another 5, he's got open 5s, okay? So on top of like that being a really good thing for him, right? He also gets to bet twice as much, 40 bucks. And the thinking way back when, you know, with the older players was, well, you know, you got to protect your hand. You got to be able to protect it, right? Where like no one's usually calling anyway when the door card pairs. So in some senses, it kind of gets the hand over with a little more quickly. The other aspect of seven card stud that is really silly and doesn't make a lot of sense is um, if I'm in the one seat and you're in the eight seat and my board reads king five and your board reads king five, because I'm in the one seat, I always go first. So a lot of stud pros back in the day would fight over the eight seat, right? Because no matter what, if they're in the eight seat, anytime that happens, they have a positional advantage. So there was a lot of nits, which in today's poker world, my goodness, these people would exploit the crap out of it because, you know, nitdom has gone to a new level with the, with the newer generation. Not personal guys, but it's just true. Like looking for small little edges that is completely legal is something that's much more prevalent today than we saw even in the old days. Okay, getting off track. So. Once we get to 5th Street, the bet doubles. So now the bet is going to be $40. The raises are $40. Same thing with 6th Street. That card comes up as well. Now we have the river. The river card comes face down. Okay. The action is always going to be throughout the entire hand on whoever has the highest board. So if one player has an ace high board versus a king high board, ace is going to bet throughout the hand. If the other player takes the lead and, say, makes a pair open, well, he's going to be first to act. Okay. Once the river card comes, there's a bet, a call, a showdown. Best five cards wins the hand. So you take two cards, throw them out. They're no good. And then it just plays regular poker. Roll flush, best hand, all the way down. Okay, so now that you guys have a basic understanding of the rules of seven card stud, let's talk about some strategies, some things to know, um, especially in how, in, in terms of how it relates to No Limit Hold'em, okay? In No Limit Hold'em, you get pocket aces against pocket kings, you're loving it. You're, you know, a big, big favorite. Those hands are not as valuable in seven card stud. A high pair versus a low pair is much closer. Let's take a look at this graphic right here. As you can see, in regular Hold'em, aces against kings, 81.95% if you're all in before the flop, right? Now take a look at 
Ace A6 versus King King 6 and stud. And look at the difference. Only 66% of the time will the Ace A6 win, right? Pretty big drastic uh, difference there, which like, and especially because the game is limit, it allows for you to chase a lot more often, okay? Um, another thing to consider too is how much closer it becomes when the lower pair has, a, has an overcard. So for example, if you're looking at King King 5, which is ahead against Queen Queen Ace, notice, notice the numbers now when you look at the graphic. Now we're at 58% to 42%. So it's much, much closer. And because in limit poker, you're always gonna be getting a really good price, it allows for you to, you know, chase down the, the hands usually of the river. So like, why is it then that aces are so much better in hold'em than kings? Because here's why. When you make two pair with aces in hold'em, the board, the pair comes on the board, right? So it's like, you know, a pair of fours. So you got aces and fours. Well, the guy with kings, you know, if he makes kings and fours, you make kings and fours. You both make two pair together. In stud, he could make two pair where you don't. So he can improve to kings up where you just end up with aces. That's why there's a big discrepancy. And that's why in stud, a lot of the time, you're getting the right pot odds to chase even when you know for certain or you're pretty sure that your opponent has a better hand, it's still correct to call to the river. Now in the river, you can decide, okay, well, I didn't improve. You know, I'm, I'm done with the hand. I'm going to fold. But often you're getting the right price to chase, especially if you have over cards to the suspected pair you think your opponent has. Well, the second thing you're going to have to consider, and this is what intimidates a lot of people that play hold'em, is like, ooh, you got to pay attention to the dead cards and memorize stuff, right? Well, the most important street to pay attention is right away on 3rd Street. Uh, let's say, for example, you've got split jacks. When I say split, I mean one is up, one is hidden. Split jacks with a six, right? It's important to now look around the board. Don't just go, wow, I got jacks, that's good. Notice, is there a jack and a six already out? That really devalues your hand significantly. Not to the point where I'm saying you should always fold it, but for example, if an ace, queen, or a king raises, and you've got dead jacks, this might be a spot where you think to yourself, okay, even if I think my jacks are good, probably worth folding because it's so less, so unlikely that with your dead cards out, you're going to improve. The same holds true with flushes we're going to get, which, which we're going to get to. And uh, with flushes, obviously, if you have three spades, it's a very strong holding in a lot of cases because you only need two more to make a flush. But if you see four spades out, <laughs> doesn't leave a lot left. Now, in terms of starting hands, you know, a hand like four, five, six off suit might look like, or two to a suit might look kind of sexy. You might think to yourself, oh, you know, a three straight. These hands are, don't, are not that good, okay? Especially if you're up against a player who's, let's say, raised with a 10. If a 10 is raised and you're, you're sitting there with a six with four, five offsuit in the hole, the standard play here should be fold. Now, there's exceptions to this rule, right? If it's a multi-way pot, you might consider seeing four street, especially if you don't see any threes or sevens, right? Because now again, you have to pay attention to the board. If you have four, five, six, and there's a seven, seven, three out, you don't want to play because your chances of hitting that straight are very, very slim. Uh, and if you do play this hand, you want to play basically like fit or fold, like where you really want to improve on four street. And if you don't, you know, although the bet is, is rather small in terms of, uh, in relation to the pot size, let's say you catch a deuce and the 10 catches a queen, you don't want to continue with four, five, oh, no, I said four, five, six. Let's say you had six, seven, eight, and you catch a deuce, because four, five, six, and you got a deuce, you got a gut shot. Let's say you had six, seven, eight, and you catch the deuce, and you're up against a player with 10 queen. Now would be a good time to fold. Uh, but again, pretty much avoid playing these kind of hands, if at all possible, because they're just going to get you into a lot of trouble. Now, we talked a little bit about three flushes, and a three flush essentially means you start with three of the same suit. And these can be powerful hands, but they're very dependent upon the board and which three cards they are, right? Ace, king, queen, all the same suit, pretty, pretty strong hand, right? Especially if you're up against the guy with a 10. You've got three over cards to his 10, and you've got three suiteds, and you've got three straights. Beautiful hand. Now, if you have deuce, three, nine, all of hearts, and a queen raises, and there's two hearts out, or let's say there's three hearts out, you've got garbage, right? So you have to be really paying attention to what's out. And as a general rule, if there are more than two of your suit out, do not chase this flush. Don't chase it based on solely the, uh, you know, the fact that you're going to hit the flush. If you happen to have a hand like 10 jack queen of hearts and a seven raises, and there's three hearts out, you can still play this hand aggressively because you have added value with the three cards straight and the three over cards to the seven. Very, very important to like not just play these three flushes naked, if you will, with no real chance to win the hand outside of you making that flush. Now, if you do have like a naked flush, like deuce three, nine of hearts, and there's no hearts out in an eight-handed game, that helps your chances of actually hitting it. So it's probably worth calling to four street. And even if you miss, 
unless there's a bet in a raise, you should probably see Fifth Street as well. Because, you know, again, if you, the price is so good that you're getting in stud, it's limit poker. Nobody can go all in on you. So the other big discrepancy uh, between Hold'em and stud is Ace King, right? In Hold'em, we get Ace King. We're like, yeah, look at me. I got Ace King. I love doing this. It's so fun these days. <laughs> I just added that in. Though. That wasn't in the script. I added that part, right? Ace King. <laughs> anyway, Ace King uh, in, in Hold'em is a powerful hand, right? We look to play that aggressively um, with some three bets and whatnot. In stud, ace king four, you know, is just not very good. Unless, of course, you have the three flush, and then it becomes a relatively powerful hand. Now, that's not to say that you shouldn't play the hand, because there are situations in stud, a lot of situations that come up where you should steal, especially if you have a high card showing. So let's say you have a king up with the ace four in the hole, right? You don't have anything good. I mean, it might look pretty, but it's really not that good. If there's no cards higher than a king behind you, you should still probably raise this hand, and uh, try to steal the annies. Because when you steal the annies in stud, it's very different than the price you're being laid in other games. So imagine 400, 800 limits, right? The ante would be $100 and the bring in is 100. So there's 900 bucks out there, right? To steal that 900, it costs four. So you're getting over two to one to steal on third street. Now, if you raise with this king, ace four, and somebody re-raises you with a queen or a jack, you don't have to continue with the hand all the way. You can go, okay, you caught me. I was stealing, and you can move on to the next one. Again, that's not always the way you're going to play it. Get into some kooky, crazy, like back and forth, I'm representing kind of thing. But uh, as a general rule, you should be stealing when you're the high card, but don't overvalue ace-king. Like, don't play this hand. Like, don't be calling raises with ace-king four, just hoping to try to catch an ace or a king. It's a bad hand. So I talked a little bit about three-card flushes, right, and why they're valuable. Well, let's take a look at what happens when you have that three-card flush and it turns into a four-flush on four street, okay? This flush draw will get there over 50% of the time. So let's take a look at the graphic right here. So here you see you have deuce, three, seven, queen, all hearts versus king, king, six, seven, okay? So the pair of kings has the flush draw absolutely crushed, right? You'd think it's got a pair, there's no way it can win. However, the flush draw is 54% to win this hand on 4th Street. So what, what that tells you is you should be playing pretty aggressively with flush draws on 4th Street. Um, the more the merrier. You know, if you've got three four-way action, you want to keep them in. So sometimes you want to think about maybe calling a bet to suck them in. So for example, if the king bets out and you pick up the flush draw and there's two guys behind you, you might not want to raise there because you might knock them out. And keeping them in is good for you because you just want bet even better odds on your hand because the more the merrier, as I said. Now, if it goes bet, call, call in front of you and you got the flush draw, spruce it up, right? Worst case scenario, you know, the guy with the better hand, you know, the big pair right now, re-raises you, gets the other two out, you play it heads up. That's not terrible. You're still a favorite. Best case scenario, he re-raises, they both call, you can re-raise, we jam it up, right? Because now you're in a really good situation. So this is why I value three card flushes so much more than three card straights. Because with three card straights, um, you don't get in as many good situations because you need to hit a lot more specific cards. For example, if you have four, five, six, you need to catch specifically a three or an eight right away. Um, or, you know, it's hard to continue with, you know, any three hearts you can pair, you can catch, you know, any one of the nine hearts remaining. Or no, pardon me, not nine, 10, 10, 10 hearts. So it's better, see? I'm doing the math as we go. We're not editing this stuff. We're just going. We're teaching stud and I'm learning stud as I'm teaching it. Okay, so hopefully this gives you guys a little bit of insight into some of the things to think about when you're playing stud. I highly encourage that you give it a shot. Um, one other thing I wanted to cover is the river, okay? Now, this isn't the time to try to be like this hero that makes these like genius next level laydowns. I mean, once you get really good at stud, maybe there'll be situations where you just can like know for sure that, you know, the guy has it and fold. But the problem with stud in terms of folding the river is let's say you're in a heads up pot that goes, Raised on third street, bet, 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 one bet each to the river. You're getting like eight to one on the call. It's not no limit. You're getting eight to one odds. So you really only have to win this pot one out of eight times. He has to be bluffing. If you have anything that can beat his board, you know, like a pair of anything or sometimes even just ace high, it's probably worth it to call unless you have other information, right? As you get better at the game, of course, you can start to figure out, okay, this guy would never do this and this and this. But overall, as a general rule, especially for you beginners out there, don't be a hero trying to fold rivers, okay? 
So, hope to see you guys at a stud table at the World Series of Poker. They've got satellites, you got $1,500 buy-in, you got the 10K stud, which is a prestigious event. A lot of the East Coasters come out for that because stud is very popular over in Foxwood, Atlantic City, and still also you know, at the Commerce Casino in Los Angeles. Um, so I really highly recommend that you expand your mind a little bit. You know, If you've been playing Hold'em for a long time, give it a shot. You may find that you have a knack for it. You may find you enjoy it. It's a little more laid back. You're not, you don't have your entire bankroll at stake every single hand. So hope you guys enjoyed this poker tip and we're gonna do some more of these. So next week we are going to cover, what should we cover? Let's cover Pot Limit Omaha, right? Cause you guys play that, but whatever. We're gonna cover Pot Limit Omaha next week. Take care.